let us now move on to key value stores key value stores so the key value stores the basic idea is that there are only two columns okay even if you want to think of it there are only two things the first is a key and then there is a value that's it so that's the entire database schema you may say or whatever so there is a key and that's a value it's almost like hashing so what does it mean is that the key can be anything but it's generally only the text so it's the, the key can be generally anything but it is id either either assigned by the database system itself or uh, one can assign its own key, but it's more like a hashing, okay? And the value can be anything. In fact, it is uh, so. I mean, it can, can be even said that the value can be internally broken up into multiple attributes, multiple uh, values, and so on, so forth. Multiple dimensions and anything it can be done. But the key is a single thing, which is generally assigned by the database itself. So, how does one do searching it? So, it is just like uh, one wants to find the particular uh, tuple. So, one has to specify its key. Once the key is done, it finds it and then the value is all returned as a single entity, single uh, maybe text or maybe something else to the system. Now, the system has to parse the value. The system has to understand that for that particular uh, database, the value is consisted of multiple attributes or it is a text or it is an image or it is something else, but that is up to the particular application the database by itself does not say anything about what the value is it just says its value that's it so it's just one blob to it so there is a key and then there is a value that's all okay and it is simply essentially an object for the uh, key value systems all right so then uh, the whole database is essentially just one big table with just the keys and values this is one big table and that's your whole database that's the entire database so this is one big table so you can again consider it as a table thing that's that's all. So the keys are stored, and then corresponding to each key, why is it called a columnar? Sometimes it is the keys are stored, and then corresponding to each key, there is a pointer, and there is the values are stored to where the object that which the value, the object of that value is stored. It's essentially just like hashing. So the hash keys are stored together, and from each hash key bucket, there is a pointer to the actual value of the object. That's it. So this in some sense then uh, becomes there is a term called schema less because um, it does not matter what the schema is because the database per se does not care about what the schema in these values is it just says there is a key and there is a value. So, for all such databases the schema is just key and value. So, it does not care what the schema inside it whether it is one big object and image or it is actually stored in a relational database manner etcetera it does not care. So, this is highly scalable and this can be this is nicely distributed why it can be very easily distributed is that you cut this database into multiple portions and give these things to machine a and uh, this to machine b this to machine c and so on so forth and uh, if you have more data you just cut it out more and you give it to machine d etc so it can be very easily distributed because all it needs to do is to just cut it out like this and give the keys essentially that's all so, this is essentially very much essentially let me state it once more this entire thing is one big distributed one big distributed hash table that is all. So, because this is like one big hash table, but this is distributed into different machines. So, that is all that is there. So, it is just a big distributed hash table. Now, all the queries are on the keys only. So, queries are only on keys. One cannot query the value itself. Just like in the hashing, one cannot say give me the key for which the value is this. It cannot be done. So, all the queries are on the keys only. So, that is one uh, disadvantage of this thing because the values cannot be looked inside. Okay? So, the keys are necessarily indexed. So, the keys there must be some kind of keys are uh, keys are generally indexed because uh, otherwise uh, one cannot keep on searching all the keys. So, the keys are indexed. These are must be indexed actually. Keys I should say are must be indexed because otherwise there is no uh, gain in using such a thing. So, this is all big table and it can use this uh, memory as a cache. So, certain certain machines, so wherever the queries land up in those the memory of those uh, machines can be used as a cache. So, certain query, certain keys if it has been, it has been queried, it can be uh, again queried just from the cache that is the 
thing okay so what are examples of these uh, kinds of systems this is cassandra of course cassandra is one big example then there is a couch db that is one example then there is redis and then there are many such examples of this key value stores okay so that's the these are the examples of this key value stores okay let us move on to the big table systems so you may be knowing that um, sometime back about a decade or so back google had this uh, big table google had a uh, schema or uh, as a relational uh, i mean google had a database i'm sorry not relation google had a database uh, which is called the big table so this started the big table system started from that big table that is why it's called big table google called it actually big table it is essentially a key value store only so this is just a key value store and it is uh, nothing uh, more than that and but data can be replicated and uh, it, it provides better availability and so on so so forth so the big table system uses uh, a timestamp so a timestamp is used to store whatever is happening so whenever a data is inserted into the table or whenever it is modified etc different times are timestamps are given so timestamps essentially help to finally achieve consistency in the sense that if an update happened at particular timestamp it can be later on uh, if the query comes at a, some other timestamp it can be later on synchronized and so on and so forth so there are different types of timestamps so the and the timestamps can be used to do something else so it can expire the data so one can say that this data will be valid till a particular time point so you can then use that to delete stale data old data can be deleted and of course to resolve conflicts so the, that's the most important thing about timestamp and we have already studied a whole lot of how the timestamps can uh, resolve conflicts so this is the read write conflicts right so that that can be resolved so the this is all used and and then there is another important term that is here so there is a map reduce uh, framework that goes hand in hand with big tables uh, to compute certain things to do certain operations on these tables the map reduce framework can be used so the map reduce framework essentially the, if you don't uh, if you simply understand the map reduce is the following manner is that suppose you want to compute a function on different things you can map portions of that input to different machines each machine does its job and then you can bring on bring in those um, uh this this, this uh, mere summaries and can then reduce it to one numbers okay so an example is that suppose you want to add in add 100 numbers and you have four machines in your hand so what you will do is you will map the first let us say this is a very simple scheme that we will map the first 24 numbers to the first machine the next 25 numbers to the second machine and so on and so forth now each machine will compute the sum of 25 numbers by itself and this is being done in parallel and this is a much lesser work and can be done much faster etc as well so then so it reduces the map that is the map the first part is a map then it reduces to this four numbers that you bring it in and sum it up and now of course this uh, this gives you the sum of all the 100 numbers so you have to ensure the correctness i mean of course sum is a very uh, easy example to see why it is correct but there are other things where the map and the reduce may not be so easy but that's the basic idea of a map reduce framework and that is being used for this big table systems okay what are the examples of big table systems of course big table itself that uh, i have already said so this is big table then age base age base is one uh, very important thing and again cassandra because cassandra you can use this map reduce framework and you see because these are all key value stores at the end anyway so these are all examples of this big table systems okay fine so then uh, let us move on to document databases so document databases so what is the basic idea of the document is that it uses documents as the main storage of data so these are so there are different uh, document formats one is xml one is json you may have heard xml and json you may not have heard json this is a binary json and then there is something called a yaml so 
essentially xml json etc these are just storages in the document form and these are certain formats of data so the data can be stored in certain formats for example the xml format data can be stored in an xml format now, xml is essentially a tree kind of uh, thing uh, and the data can be uh, said that okay there is uh, it can be stored in a uh, nice uh, tree kind of format and that is the xml the flexibility of xml is that one can define the own schema and that can be part of the XML document. So, you can define that uh, suppose I will have a, a library, the library is one big chunk. So, you can define XML like this. So, suppose there is a big library, E library will have different things, maybe a book, maybe a periodical, etc. So, you can define this entire structure, the tree structure. Book will have a title, will have uh, authors, and it can have a, I mean, ISBN number so on so forth and it can have so you can uh, then then this is your schema so this part becomes part of the xml and you can define your entire library collection using this thing so what you say is you first d define the library scope then within that there are book scopes then within that there are title values and so on so forth so that's uh, the xml thing that can be done okay so the document the, the xml uh, the whole thing uh, the itself is a database so the uh, the, do, the, 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 the particular book. So, within library there will be particular book. So, so, the XML tags are given like book and then within book you will mention certain things and then there is a closing uh, thing for books. So, this is just like the HTML tag. So, this itself becomes a key because that is, is this is all inside one big uh, XML document. So, that is the thing. So, document um, this can be put to a particular uh, location there is a URI etc and can be these things, but very very importantly just like the other systems what is inside a document. So, to find out whether there is an author field etc that needs to be parsed. So, and you so the and the and the, the database parse by itself does not provide any mechanism to parse it, it is up to the application to say that okay, I want to find out the author. So, it will look for that particular author thing, etc. Note that this is one of the very, very important advantages of a relational database format. Once the schema is fixed, once the schema is given, then the database does all the parsing, etc. So, once you say I have this schema, I have the following attributes uh, that roll number, uh, name and uh, year and co uh, department etc. Then you just say I want to find a query on department and the database does it. You do not have to then get that entire student tuple and find out where the department is, the database does it for you. But not for this kind of document databases or in general for this uh, key value stores, so it is not uh, given. You have to parse the database has to be. So, again it can use the map reduce framework and this can be very useful. Uh, so, so, document databases are ac actually very, very useful in the following sense where you insert once. So, the data is uh, up inserted once. So, this is only insert once and read many. So, for example, in typical libraries etc, you will uh, the library will acquire the book particular once and many, many people will search that book or do something with the book uh, read it. So, that is very uh, this thing and this can scale up much uh, bet better manner. So, that so that is a good thing about document databases and uh, the examples of uh, document databases are this is your MongoDB is a document database and so is CouchDB. So, CouchDB is another document database. Okay. So, these are the two uh, big examples of this thing. So, finally, we have the graph databases. So, the graph database, the entire uh, all the tuples etc is represented as a graph. So, what are the nodes? The nodes are the, so the nodes represent the entities in the graph. So, this is the Facebook graph that I have been talking about. So, nodes, so the, what are the nodes in this thing? The every person, every account holder is maybe a node. And then the ages encode the relationships between this. So, the friend relationships is essentially an age. Okay. So, this entire thing is stored like a graph database. So, the, it is not easy to store this in a relational manner, but it is much more natural and easier to store it in this graph format for social networks for example. It is a very natural node age kind of relationships. It can be directed of course, it can be directed or undirected depending on what the application is or what the kind of database it is saying. 
it can have hyper edges as well. So, what are hyper edges is that it is not a single uh, edge between two nodes, it can a particular edge may be over multiple uh, nodes. For example, a group in a Facebook can have multiple nodes, so that one group may be represented as a hyper edge of all the uh, members in that all the nodes in there. So, why are graph databases useful? Graph databases are useful for certain types of queries. These queries are let us say you want to find uh, neighbors of uh, every. So, I want to find friends of friends and these kind of things that if it is in a relational format or if it is in some key value format etcetera, it is much harder to find it. You have to get all the values of uh, myself then parse them and then get all the values of those etcetera. But in a graph thing it is much more natural to find friends of friends or find neighbors etcetera, this is much more natural and it is it is actually being shown by Facebook and other people uh, other other companies that this is much faster as well, much more efficient, much more scalable. Okay. And what are the some examples of this is there is this Neo 4J, okay. then there is Hypergraph, then there is Titan, so on so forth. There are many, many other examples that one can find of. So, these are the examples of this. Thing. So, what are the things about uh, the no, no SQL is that, so no SQL although it started as an anti SQL movement actually it said that oh we do not want SQL any further, it is not so more, it, it, it is just not only SQL, it cannot live without the relational database, the relational database as I said earlier is just too powerful. Okay. And uh, so, it is essentially a compromising saying that in some cases the relational database does, does not scale or the consistency requirements, the transaction requirements is just too strict for certain applications and, and it may not be required. So, acidity is sacrificed and you uh, rather go for this distributed setups which is much more scalable. Okay. So, that is the thing. But no SQL as a, is not good for every scenario. Banking scenarios must use this uh, consistency and transaction protection, durability, etc. No SQL system just fail. And even nowadays, it is uh, people are realizing more and more that consistency matters a lot. So, eventual consistency may not be desirable in all kinds of applications. So, there are now people are although no SQL is very much hyped and it seems to be taking over it is nowhere near relational databases and, and actually database researchers are again going back to this traditional RDBMS things and trying to fix certain problems in OSQL using the traditional RDBMS methods, all right. So, so most legacy uh, systems still use this RDBMS etcetera and OSQL uh, is, is currently well it is as I said it is currently too hyped etcetera and, and, and no SQL, but however no SQL um, the, the one important thing about no SQL is that the, with the advent of big data and cloud computing etcetera most of those try to use no SQL system. So, they try to use the properties of no SQL or do rely on no SQL as the back end database as the support systems for all of that. Okay. So, that uh, ends the module on uh, no SQL and uh, later we will touch on a little bit on uh, big data.